So we are back in the teeny tiny Terraria world and in today's video my goal is to tick off every little pre-hard mode thing we need to do before the wall of flesh because the wall of flesh is going to be our biggest headache. But that leaves the eater of worlds, it leaves queen bee and also one of my personal favorites Skeletron. That's right today we're going to be fighting Skeletron in the teeny tiny world and I'm really looking forward to it because it's going to be a, a pretty challenging fight because we have very limited movement. Now, before we do any of that, I need to head back down to the jungle and find out about some of the spore that's maybe been growing in. Because I would like a full set of armor. It's true. Even though it's not really relevant right now, I'd like it. So as we look around for spore, I wanted to talk about some of your comments on the last episode. Because I did kind of ask you a lot about why we're not getting bunnies. And there was quite a lot of theories, but I feel like it came down to... Because we're in an ocean biome, technically, and I don't think we can change that, I feel like bunnies are kind of off the menu, all right? We're not scranning on those today. Um, so I think when we do the Wall of Flesh, it is going to be a case of we need to use regular dynamite rather than an explosive bunny. But maybe there's an alternate method to, to beat the boss. I don't know. I've never tried. But we'll figure it out and we'll do it together. So whenever I play this map, I usually have a couple of questions just kind of mulling over in my brain. And I think the biggest one I'm focused on right now is what exactly is going to happen when we enter hard mode? Will the hallowed actually spawn in? Will the corruption spread? Will the crimson spread? Genuinely, I have no idea because all of those are going to be, I imagine, a little bit essential. But then again, I, I don't know. It's weird because you've got to look at Terraria in a completely different way. And when you've played the game for as long as I have, it's kind of weird to, to think of it as, as anything different. I do think a big thing we're going to be doing, though, right at the very start of hard mode, is just a bunch of fishing so that I can get the crates. So what I'm trying to do is make sure I've got lots of uh, bait for hard mode. Hey, look at that, a bezel. Nice. Oh, and there's a frog. Tell you what, I want this frog because I really want to make a froggy baguette because I've not made one yet. So over the weekend, the channel actually hit 940,000 subscribers, meaning we are less than 60,000 away from the big 1 million. I also went ahead and checked the analytics, and apparently in the past 30 days, over 4 million people that watched were not subscribed. So if you're one of those people and you're enjoying this video, or maybe you've seen a few, consider hitting that subscribe button. It's free, you can change your mind later, and it really supports the channel. So for those who didn't catch the last video, this is where we're going to be fighting Skeletron. And as you can see, it's, it's not very large, but I feel like over the years, I have gotten better at Skeletron. So I'm hoping that I'm going to tap into the matrix with this one and just kind of make it work. So we did have a slime rain at the start of the episode, but here's the thing, because King Slime can't spawn, I feel like it's a, it would have been a waste of time to, to farm slimes. I, I don't necessarily need the gel right now, so, um, so I just kind of left it on the back burner, to be completely honest. Man, this place is a frog producing machine. That is so cool. Uh, so I think the order of today is gonna have to be I think we're going to do Queen B first. Now, Queen B, to my understanding, and people keep saying I'm wrong about some things that I say, Queen B isn't an essential boss. Yeah, I'm just going to stand by that. It's not. But I think what would be cool about doing it is we could get the B staff, and then we could use the B staff against Skeletron. And then it just makes it a little bit more fun, right? It gives us a little bit of extra damage. Because I have a gut feeling, and I don't like this feeling, that if that old man dies and we don't kill Skeletron, the map won't respawn him. I just have a, a horrible feeling about it because this map is so broken as it is. But then again, if that was the case, maybe the lunatic cultists wouldn't spawn. So I think what I'm going to do for Queen Bee is make an arena below the biome and just see from there to see how we do. Uh, so looking at these spores then, do we now have enough to, to make the chess piece? A, we do. Jungle shirt. Six defense increases maximum mana by 20. So it really doesn't change anything other than <laughs> being more consistent. Because uh, it's equally six defense. But we do technically have more mana now. But we also don't have a mana weapon. So a little bit pointless, but that's all right. So I think anybody that's watched me before will know that I'm not very good at Queen Bee. So I'm going to need to prepare a little bit better than some of the other fights. So I feel like because we haven't got Daybloom... A big thing is going to be like poor life regen. 
So I think what I'm going to do is use some of the stuff that we've picked up today, like the frogs, uh, and make some food. I feel like food is going to be kind of crucial. I think in terms of weapons, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the blade to kill the bees. I'm also going to be using grenades, and then I'll likely just use uh, the Undertaker as my main weapon, uh, you know, providing that everything goes well. Because this is another fight where I don't really want to lose, because getting it to spawn in again is going to take resources, and I don't exactly know how many is going to be in there. Oh, wow. Okay. So I didn't know this. You could already make a, a food item with frogs. Sauteed frog legs. Nice. Or a froggle bunwick. Bunwitch? <laughs> what? Oh, is it meant to be like sandwich, but with a bun? A bunwitch. Has a bit of a kick to it. Yeah, I'll take that. Thank you very much. That looks so grim. That looks like um, what you'd find at the dumpsters behind Subway. Very nice. Right. Um, I think we're probably ready, to be fair. I'm going to go build an arena down there for sure, but... Yeah, it's looking, it, I think we'll be fine. So the funny thing is, I can already imagine the comments now where people are like, nah, James, Queen Bee is super easy. All you've got to do is jump up and down. Look, I'm just bad, all right? <laughs> I don't know why, but just, I've always been bad at this fight. I played thousands of hours of Terrarium, true Terraria veteran right here. Uh, I'm just not a Queen Bee veteran, and I don't think I ever will be. I've tried. I've really tried to learn this fight. I'm just, I'm terrible at it. So getting hit by that slime actually reminded me one accessory, which is going to be very good, is one of these bad boys. A bezel or basil or whatever. Because um, here's the thing. We don't exactly need two sets of boots, do we? So I'll take rid, I'll get rid of one, replace it with this. And now we have an immunity to poison kind of essential. So I think what I'm going to do is break in through this side and then we'll go in and uh, and actually find the spawner. That is actually if there even is a spawner in here. You don't really know with this world what there's going to be and I imagine it, it could be a challenge where it's like oh no there's no spawner in here but you have all the tools required. Sorry I was just checking the map there just to see. Right okay. Bring these bees over here. Kill them. All right, I don't want to be killing them with my icy blade and all that. So I want to make sure I get in without spilling honey absolutely everywhere. Okay, it's going to be a nightmare to clean up. Oh, no. Come on. Get out of here. Right. Uh, oh. <laughs> I've got to be so careful how I how I go about this. Come on, bee. Get out of here. Right. So let's see. Is there a lava in... Oh, okay, there is. There is. Right. So the plan is we are going to... There's a lot of enemies out there. I don't know if this... Right, it's a good idea. There we go. All right, Queen Bee is awoken. So what we're going to do is we're going to come out of here, drop down, bring it into the arena, get rid of all the extras, because why not? You know what? Actually, this might not be too bad. This might not be too bad because it's normal mode. I'm kind of used to playing on master mode, right? Not too much of a flex there, but I guess a little bit. All right. You know, Trari veteran. Put it on the tombstone. Um, so because this is normal mode, it might not be too bad. But then again, I just don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know why I'm so fumbly with this fight. Also, a lot of you want to know, why does my mouse shake so much? I've, I've addressed this a few times. Why does my mouse shake every time I, I fire a weapon in any game? It's because I'm a very aggressive clicker and my mouse is very light. <laughs> so what happens is, as I'm aiming, as I'm clicking, it's moving the, the little... Because I have a... I don't know. It's my sensitivity... Mixed with the fact that, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's a hard thing to explain. I only noticed that after everybody pointing it out hundreds of times. People are like, so what happens then? Before a boss fight, is it, you know, you slamming five espressos? Nah, they ain't slamming espressos, even though I do quite I like a little bit of coffee, not gonna lie, all right? I'd slam an espresso before a boss fight, sure. But I tell you what, I don't do it for the, for the mousing abilities. Okay, right, this fight is actually going decently. I would like to use grenades because I find them fun. <laughs> but I don't know if that's a good idea. Am I tempting fate? I feel like in the last video, I managed to prove to a lot of people how good grenades really are. Because we stomped the brain of Cthulhu. So I would almost say that that's a Terraria life hack in itself. So one thing I will say, and I don't know if it's actually because of the fact that the player is moving like absent of the, the camera's movement compared to normal Terraria. But is Queen Bee slower in normal mode? Is that a thing? Because it feels slower. It feels way slower. But then again, maybe it's because this area is actually larger than an area I would build for the Queen Bee. 
I feel like a big thing people say to me is, look, James, you need a better arena. A good arena is, is, is a good thing, but I tell you what, you know what kills me with the Queen Bee? It's, it's getting hit. <laughs> when it's sweeping side to side. So there we go. It's complete. We got the honeycomb. We got the bee's knees. Man, this, this weapon is very special to me. It's very special indeed. I, I, I love this weapon. I love it so much. I'll tell you why. It's because back in the day, Relogic were like, James, we want you to announce a weapon to the world. And it was the bee's knees. So I look at it and I feel like, yeah, it's my weapon. <laughs> I feel a sense of pride. Right. So, uh, Hornet Staff obtained. Thank you very much. And also, bee's knees obtained. I mean, we can't deny that that's pretty great. So, since we are not going to be using this gold for um, for endless king slime fights, because we can't get them to spawn in, I am going to use our gold for something else. I'm going to make a gold watch. I feel like it's hard to play Terraria without knowing the time. Is that just me? It might just be me. So, Skeletron. We have a couple of minutes to do Skeletron, or I'd be, I'm going to be responsible. I'm going to go to bed. And I'm going to wait until it's a little bit earlier than half seven. Go down there and, and begin building an arena. So this is pretty interesting. Another naturally spawning goblin army has arrived. Now, I tell you what. I do not know when the last time that ever happened to me was. I don't know why. But it always turns out for me that I have one in pre-hard mode. And sometimes one in hard mode. So this is abnormal. It's abnormal. This, uh, this shows you the power of the, the bee's knees, though. Look at this. Because when we fought Goblin Army not too long ago, it was a nightmare. A true nightmare. But the bees are just... Well, they're the best. Let's be real here. I really wonder what the Goblin Tinkerer is thinking internally right now. Because is the lore that these captured him? Tied him up? Like, what's he thinking? He's like, oh god, they've returned. Nah, look at him. He's just sat on a chair. He's not even phased. He's like, nah, I'll be all right. Is anybody, anybody got a broom? Somebody put the kettle on, maybe? Carl, the guide is dead. Okay. <laughs> goblin, you might have something to worry about now. So that's it. The goblin army has been completed. That was way easier than before. Yeah, that was not a problem at all. So I feel like now I have no problem thinking about the witch. What? Oh. <laughs> I was like, why did I subconsciously say the witch doctor? What I was going to say is I've got no problem at all with uh, with Skeletron. I feel like we're going to have a, a good time. Should I buy any of these? Imbuing station, maybe? Nah, we'll be fine, right? It's off the bed. So real quick, you may have noticed that the party girl has yet to spawn in. And that's because Terraria is kind of strange with the party girl. The thing is, she has like a, a random chance to spawn every morning. So some people are super lucky and they get the party girl with no problem. But then also, you can play for 50 hours and never get a party girl. Strange, right? So is there anything here I should be buying? <laughs> Do you know what? I feel like I need a diamond ring. Yeah, that's it. Right, so it's quarter to six. So what we're going to be doing is purchasing some more arrows. Because I kind of used them all on the, the goblins. So we'll buy a whole bunch. Uh, I don't feel like we necessarily need to, to do all that much for Skeletron. I feel like we're going to have a very, very easy time with this fight. I don't think there's going to be any trouble at all. Shipton is, is departed. Well, peace, mate. Yeah, I don't think we're going to have trouble. I think it's going to be a nice, easy fight. So after uh, Skeletron, what we're going to be doing is uh, the Eater of Worlds. Now, the reason I'm doing that first is because the corruption is actually kind of lower than the dungeon. So it makes sense to open up the dungeon, walk our way through it, dig down and into the corruption. So I know I put a lot of emphasis earlier on how important getting this fight right the first time is going to be. Uh, and I know it seems a little bit counterintuitive that I'm not going to build a proper arena. But I really feel like with the bee's knees, this is going to be a very chill fight. I do. I just feel like we are absolutely stacked against this bony boy. So what we'll do is we'll take a, another frog sandwich. Thank you very much. Um, then I guess we just jump into it. I genuinely feel like this is going to be fine. I don't feel like we have a problem. These might be words that I, I die by, which wouldn't be great. But I feel like we've got a good chance. Right. Old man, begin the curse. See, like, I haven't even bothered to, to put up some campfires and a heart lantern. That's how confident I'm feeling. But then again, 
and only just something I've just thought about. Why did I only just think of this? We can very easily get stun locked by the by the head. That's a really good point, actually. Why did I not actually think about that? I think if this was expert mode, you would have a really rough time with this fight. You would need to put so much work into the arena because you really want that vertical space in expert mode. Because I'm kind of conflicted. I feel like this map would would suit expert mode a little bit more just to make some of the enemy encounters a little bit worse. But, hey, we got a day bloom. Oh, that's really good. So that means that we can grow day bloom. They just grow down here. I feel like the map would suit expert mode to some extent, but not fully. Not fully. I feel like some bosses would, would die by the expert mode and you would soft lock yourself out of the map. Maybe, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I'll tell these things. What do we get? Skeletron mask? No chippies count? All right, run cancelled. Run cancelled. I'm going to keep an eye on this area then. Since it does have a... Oh, Sim the Wizard! Hell yeah. Yeah, since it has all that. Now, I don't think they're going to give you... I mean, <laughs> I don't know what the creator's like. I don't think they would give you a water bolt on this map. Because I feel like a water bolt could really, really mess with the difficulty. So this dungeon is, is way bigger than I thought. So I only saw a small portion of it here. And I thought, ah, since the corruption's there, it'll only be this big. But this is a, a full-sized dungeon. That is so interesting. Of all the things to make full-sized, this one seems a little bit odd. So I don't know how loud the, the music's going to be in editing, but listen to this song. Does anybody get really huge Binding of Isaac vibes from this song? Like, that's straight out of Binding of Isaac, isn't it? Every time I hear it, I'm like, what? Is, is this a custom soundtrack? It's funny I say that about Binding of Isaac as well, because one of the songs, and I think it's the one that plays during the ocean, during the day, is part of the Otherworld uh, soundtrack, gives me such strong Assassin's Creed 2 vibes. So I feel like the creator really took some inspiration in weird ways when making the, the soundtrack. So this is hell. This is what we have to deal with. This is it. Now, this has been something I have been dreading seeing because I don't know how they're going to approach it. Now, are they going to give us enough Hellstone to make a pickaxe and more? Or is it just going to be one pickaxe we can make? What are they going to do in here? So the plan really is, and I still feel like this is going to work, a Hellstone bridge and we use dynamite. I think that has to be the, the plan, right? I don't think we could do anything else. So looking at this... They've already used two homes to cover up half of the screen, which is very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Now, I feel like we should be good because you can see Fire Blossom is growing in here. So I, I, I do feel like our chances of actually getting... All right, let me grab that now. I do feel like our chances of actually getting um, Obsidian Skin Potions is going to be fine. That's not going to be a problem. But looking at this, killing the Wall of Flesh this quickly... It's something I have never done. And I'll tell you the truth, I'm kind of terrified. 